Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of Ephesians. Today we're looking at the last couple of verses of Ephesians chapter 3. That's chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. This is also the conclusion of Paul's great prayer for the Ephesian believers. We've been looking at this prayer for the last few sessions as Paul appeals to our Heavenly Father to strengthen these believers in their inner being through the Holy Spirit that they might know and experience the great love of Christ and that they might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. What a wonderful, amazing prayer it is and what great things Paul asks for the believers. And now as he concludes his prayer, he concludes it in these two verses with sort of a benediction, uh, uh, an exaltation of praise to God, to the God who is able to answer all of our prayers. That's what Paul says as he concludes this prayer, chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him, that is to God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and forever. Amen. So Paul ends his prayer by raising his voice, bringing glory to God. To him be the glory. I think of that great hymn we sing in the church sometimes. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Yes, indeed, to God be the glory. And this is what Paul is saying as he wraps up this prayer. To him, to God be the glory. He is the one who can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. You know, Paul was bringing a, a very bold, audacious request, a great prayer, praying that we might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That is a great prayer. But God can do it, and God can do more than we could ever hope to imagine or to ask. I think Paul would encourage us when we pray to pray great prayers. There's an old hymn that says, Large petitions with you bring, you are coming to a king. We're coming to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's bring large petitions. Let's pray for God to do great things. Let's pray that he might fill us to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's what Paul prayed for. Now, that's a great prayer. But God is able to do it. He is able to do immeasurably more than all that we could ever ask or imagine. Have confidence when you pray. Have faith when you pray. Because our God is a great God. And so to him be the glory. And notice he says that glory comes to him in the church and through the church, all through Jesus Christ. The Son brings the glory of the Father through his redeeming work in the church, all by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so what a, a great way to, to close this prayer. To him be glory. The one who could do far more than we could ever ask or think. To him be the glory. To him be the glory in the church. To him be the glory through, through Jesus his son. To him be the glory by the power of the Holy Spirit. Forever and forever. Amen. You know, when, when we pray, let's pray with the same kind of confidence, the same kind of audacity, the same kind of boldness uh, that Paul had when he prayed. Let's pray for God's full will to be accomplished in us and through the church. Let's pray for God's glory to be revealed through us and through the church. Let's pray it with power because the power of God is at work within us. As he said in the prayer, according to his power that is at work within us. That is the power of the Holy Spirit that fills us, fills the, the church, and that activates us to pray. When we pray is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through the Son to the Father, asking God to do great things in and through his people, the church, and to bring glory to himself. That's the kind of prayers we ought to pray. That's the kind of prayer Paul prayed as he prayed for the Ephesians. Amen indeed and amen. Hope you join us tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll, in our session we'll begin looking at chapter 4, the second part of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is easily divided into two parts, chapters 1 and 3, is the great teaching or doctrine Paul wants to, to give to the church. And then chapters 4 through 6 is the practical expression, believing these things, believing in Christ, how should we live? And so as we begin chapter 4, he begins talking about how we as the people of Christ, the church, should live by faith through grace in the power of the Holy Spirit. But we'll begin that in tomorrow's session, so I hope you join us for that. 
our five-minute Bible study in the book of Ephesians.